Okay, we can go and get started. Everybody hear me? Great, so I don't know, anybody went to the uh, keynote sessions, but Adrian Cockrell mentioned Docker in there, which I didn't know he was going to mention, so that kind of gave you a, a little bit about that. And he did mention that we have just, we've released a, the official version of Nginx open source on Docker, so that um, kind of spurred this whole getting here, and I'm going to talk about Nginx Plus as well, and, um, and how you can use that. And again, I'm not going to go into great d detail on all of the Docker can do, because it can do a lot, and I only have 20 minutes, so I'm going to focus on a sort of a local demo here. Most of my presentation will be demo. I just wanted to start with just a few slides to kind of set the stage for those of you who may not be aware of um, what Docker is and what Docker does. So my name is Rick Nelson. I direct the uh, technical solutions team at Nginx. We do handle all technical pre-sales. I also write a lot of blog posts, and I just published a blog this morning on Docker. Um, so if you go to nginx.com and look under blogs, uh, and that I'm able to go into a lot more detail than I can do in 20 minutes here. So if you really want to find out, you can read about that, and you'll see the examples I've done. The Docker files and everything are in there. So what is Docker? So it's a platform, and it allows you to build, ship, scale uh, applications. So it uses containers. Um, and again, these containers can be anywhere. I'm going to show a demo where they're all sitting on my laptop in in, um, on a machine. I have a virtual machine. I'm using containers on that virtual machine. But you can do that, and you'll see, uh, he, uh, as Adrian showed you, things like Google, Google, Google Compute Cloud, other clouds, and so forth. So it can be much broader than what I'm going to show. Uh, it has a Docker engine. That's the real guts. That's the open source tool that, that does all the, the heavy lifting. And then the Docker Hub. That's the repository where you can get images. Um, and that's where we just recently released an image for the open source version. And I'll show you how you can create your own images of Nginx Plus. So just real quick here. So Docker is kind of thing that traditionally we've been doing with hypervisor virtualization. So it's sort of a new way of um, addressing some of the same concerns that you have, but in a much lighter weight way of doing it. So example in the virtual machine here we see, and the main difference is when you're doing a VM, every VM has its own copy of the operating system. Docker doesn't, isn't doing that, it's sharing the operating system. You'll see Docker's running on top of the host OS. So it's actually sharing that operating system across those containers, um, but still getting isolation between containers. So what it means, you can get a lot more density on a box than you can with virtual machines because you're not basically replicating the OS you know, 10, 20, or 100 times. So you can really pack a lot of containers onto one Docker host. Okay. So when it comes to Nginx and, and Docker, so we, again, we just released the open source version. So if you go to the hub, and I'll actually show you in the, in, on the screen in a minute, you can actually download that. That is um, curated by us, um, and it is the open source image. Nginx Plus being a commercial version, the way Docker Hub works, we really can't release it there today. Um, so you have, to, you have to create your own image. But I'll show you how that's pretty simple to do, and then you can uh, have your own image of Nginx Plus. And one of the nice things about Docker, it's really easy to create images from images. So you can take the open source image and create your own version. Um, Adrian mentioned you might want a load balancer version or a cache version or a web server version. You could take that one, you can create all those yourself. Or you can create many more variations of that. Then you can reuse those, those images very quickly, and we'll, I'll show you how you do that. Okay, so let's get off the demo. So that's the heart of what I'm going to do today. Let's get rid of this. So I mentioned the Docker, uh, Docker Hub. You see this is the Docker Hub here. You'll see there's a bunch of different um, things there. You can search for that, but these are the ones in the main page. And you'll see Nginx listed right here. So if we click on that. So if we click on Nginx, we'll see. Come on. So this is the Nginx page. So in some of Nginx, you'll see lots of examples of running Docker. And you'll see, if you read this and then you and look at my stuff, I'm doing a lot of stuff that's in here. I'm doing some more stuff, and there may be some stuff I'm not doing here. It's a great place to start for examples. Um, and you see here the Docker file. So this Docker file, um, when I wrote my blog post, it was kind of interesting because this file is called Docker file. So it's the Docker file file, uh, which so you'll see in my blog post, I just called it Docker file, but it's, uh, it actually is named a Docker file. Um, and that's what you use to create images. And you see, again, I don't have time to go through in the 20 minutes all this, but this is a fairly simple thing here. It's basically installing Nginx in a container. Um, and you can run commands and so forth. When this runs, you wind up with an image that image then can, and then can be reused. It has, in this case, it's using Debian, and it has um, Nginx installed on top of it. And this is the one that was used to create the image that you can pull from here. Again, if you want to create your own image, you can grab this Docker file, make your own, and start from scratch. Or you can take our Nginx image and build an image from an image, however you want to do that. Okay. So let's show how you would actually create a container. So everything's running here. I'm on a Mac. It's VM Refusion, so I have a... Um, just a Linux instance here that I've got Docker installed on. So again, in the real world, 
you might be using clouds and all sorts of stuff, but mine is a very sort of localized thing here. Um, so it's in a command line. We can create a container. All the commands you'll see might, are always starting with Docker, and then you say, run Docker, and here's the command I want to run. To do a container, you'd use Docker run. I'm going to give it a name. If you don't give it a name, it'll generate one for you. Um, but I want to, for my purposes, I'm going to call this my nginx. So dash capital P is going to do port mapping for me dynamically. So this nginx image exposes ports 80 and 443. Yours could expose any that you wanted. But the issue is on this Docker host, if I were to, just, to do two or 10 or 100 of these images, they're all going to want to use port 80. And we're mapped, since we're on the container through the host, we're coming through here, we'd have port conflict. So we need to map our ports. Capital P tells Docker to map the ports for me, and it'll randomly choose the ports for those. If you want to map them yourself, you can use a lowercase p and then say map 80 to this and, and um, 443 to another one like that. The dash D option means we want to run it in detached mode as opposed to interactive. It basically think of it as running as a daemon. It's going to run, it's going to start up and run, but it's not going to be listening for command access. And then we tell it what image to base it off of. And we're going to use the Nginx from the repository. Um, if this was the first time I used this image, this command would run a little bit longer because I'd have to download stuff, but I've previously done this, so it has it sitting on my local thing here, and I can re it'll download the image once, and then you can reuse it without having to go back there. Okay? So I created a container. It was very quick. That long string you see there is the long form of the container ID. You'll find you can use that. This container has this long ID, has a short ID, which is the first few characters, and then it also has a name. We can see that it's running by running the docker ps command, and there's our container running. We'll see that you see the container ID is a short form, and you can just see it's the first few characters there. Um, tells me what image I'm running on, uh, when it was created, and so forth. And on the right over here, which is one of the reasons I want to see, you'll see the port mapping. So again, it, it mapped port 80 to port 49176. Okay. So we should be able to actually go see the, that the Nginx is running. If we go to my local machine, which I've called um, docker-example.com, and I already forgot what number that was. Any remembers? Uh, seven six. Thank you. We should see the nginx welcome page. So that tells us nginx is running in that container. Okay. Um, before we get into more details about containers, I'm just going to show you how if I wanted to do the same thing with nginx plus, what would I do there? So I've created my own Docker file in this directory here. You can spell. So in here, this is my what we call the, the build context. This is where my Docker file is located, any other files that I want to use. And the two files I want to use here are the Nginx repo cert and key. Um, for Nginx Plus, for those of you who don't know it, when you get an eval or you purchase Nginx Plus, you get a, a certificate and a key that gives you access to our repository. So this repository is secured. So I need that when I do the installation process. So I've, I've copied them locally here. And we can see the Docker file. It's going to be a little bit longer than the, um, I'm sorry a little bit longer than the one we looked at a minute ago, because the install grabs a certificate and so forth. But you'll see it's just running regular commands here, um, a few things here, at, you know, doing some app gets, um, gets a few other files that you need for the installation process, and then it installs Nginx Plus. Um, so it's pretty simple. Again, we again expose ports 4, 4 3, and uh, 8080. So we can build that image by running the docker build command. Uh, and then we give it a name. We're, I'm going to call this Nginx Plus for my image here. And we misspelled something. Oh, the dot tells me where is the build context. I want to do it from the local directory. So, okay. That builds it very quickly. Again, if I had not built, I'm using the Ubuntu here. If I hadn't, have, if this was my first image of Ubuntu, it would have taken a little longer to download Ubuntu the first time. But since I pre previously built one, it has basically in the Docker cache has my previous one. So now I have a new image. I should be able to see this image if I go to docker images nginx plus and you'll see there's my new image um, and you'll see so i have ubuntu here i have the nginx and so forth so it's been built which is really good um, now we want to create a docker container it's going to be just like we did a minute ago we're going to do docker run give it a name we'll call this my plus one because i'm going to create a few more in a minute again map the ports run it as a um, um, attached version, but instead of using the Nginx image, we're going to use Nginx plus the image I just created. Okay. Again, if we run Docker PS, we should have two containers running, and we'll see this one just got created, and it's now mapped to port 419178. So we should get the welcome page here. 
So it's running too. So now I have two containers, one off the open source, one off Nginx Plus, both which is default Nginx configuration. So not terribly exciting from that standpoint, but they're both running there. So again, great demo, it works great, but now how would I modify the content or the configuration? So we have a couple of options there. One way we can actually mount a volume on the Docker host um, into that container, effectively linking the, the two. So I can actually maintain my files on the host and they'll get reflected in the container. So I'll show you how to do that. What I've done um, for that is I've created uh, a directory uh, var www on this machine. And you see I have one file, index.html, which instead of the Nginx welcome page, just says hello from Nginx, and this was added in there. Um, so I can create a new container, similar to the one we just created. Sorry. Ah. We'll call this my plus two. And the difference is we're going to tell it to mount this volume, var dub dub dub, from the local machine, the Docker host, and mount it onto the Nginx default um, content director, which is Nginx, uh, or user share Nginx HTML. We want to mount it read only in the container because we want to be sure it comes from here. And the same stuff at the end here. And again, the same image that we used a minute ago. And so now we have another container. And if we do Docker PS, we'll see the third container. This one's now on 41780. And now if we come to there, we should see a new page come up. Parts if I spell it right. Okay, and now we see the, the, the page. So that came from the, um, that over, uh, came from the Docker image. Uh, or the Docker host. We can actually come in here if we were to um, change this file. Oh, sorry. We'll just put in here new hello. We should see it reflected here. Actually, let me shrink my uh, browser here for the resolution. Almost. And we see it was reflected here. So I'm going to have the container running, but I'm maintaining my stuff on the Docker host. And I could do this for a number of containers. I could have them all actually feeding off the same one and manage them the same. I could have each have their own directory. However I wanted to do that would be just fine. The other way I can do this is I can copy the content from the host into the one, but then have them disconnected. So once it's in the container, it's maintained separately. Um, and we do that a little bit differently. For that, we actually got, we're going to create an image from the image I just showed you. Um, so for that, I have another directory I call it docker copy. So a new build context. I have a new docker file. You'll see it's extremely short. And it basically it says grab the nginx plus image I just created. And because I'm copying files, it's going to leave anything on the container. It's fine. It's going to copy the new files. If you've done any nginx, you know there's going to be a default configuration file and then the SSL configuration. I'm telling you to delete those two files and then copy the files from this content directory that's local here, you see here in the config directory. And it's, again, pretty simple uh, stuff I have here. And then at the bottom here, you see I'm mounting these volumes, and we'll go about that, talk about that later. That, by mounting the volumes here, it actually allows me to grab them from another container, which I'll show you in a, in a, in a second here. Um, if we look at the content, I'll just get in. So we'll just cap that. Again, we'll see one that just says, this says Docker content copied from container. So we should see that one come up here. Okay. Um, so we need to build a new image. And I'm going to call it my plus image. Again, that Docker file is going to say, take it, the Nginx plus image is built, create a new image, but copy the files to it. Okay. Again, that copies very fast. We should see a new, a new image called my plus image. Uh, did I misspell it? Thank you. Yes. OK. Let me build it correctly here for those I don't screw up, isn't it? It's a problem with live demos. OK. And now we see we have another new image here. Um, so now we can create a new uh, container again. 
And again, same as the ones we've seen in the past. Thank you. But again, now we're going to talk to use this new image we just created. And then we have this one running. We do a Docker PS. We'll see this one's now running on 49182. You may see a pattern to the random port numbers. Okay, and now we see the Docker content copied from the Docker file. Um, I don't have a lot, of, we're running out of time here, so I'm going to speed up my demo. I, w I was going to show you that if I change the file on the volume, you will see it didn't change. So you know, just please trust me for that. Um, so now I've got, so I've added the files. I've sort of linked the files from the volume. I've separated them. So you can do it either way here. So how would I actually get at these, again, as, again, if you saw Adrian's talk, you know, API. So if you want to ma manage the upstreams and so forth, you can use it with the API. If you actually want to ma manage the configuration files in this new one here, because I'm no longer managing them on the, um, the host, but locally, you can use what we call a helper container. So I can create a new container, an interactive one with shell access, um, and use the volumes I mounted before and actually grab those volumes for that. Um, if you, I just published a blog post this morning. I can't remember if I mentioned that or not, but in that blog, I did mention that. Yes. I, I linked to a really nice article on why you don't really want SSH access into the Nginx container. Containers are meant to be sort of single purpose things. So we're going to do it through a, what we call a helper container. So this is going to run a little bit different. So instead of the dash D, I'm going to say dash I for interactive, dash T to give me a TTY. And I'm going to say to grab all the volumes that were mounted on that container. And if you remember from my Docker file, it was basically content and config from the container we just created, which is my plus three. And this one we're going to call my plus files. And I'm going to use Ubuntu. And I want to use Ubuntu here because my uh, image was built off Ubuntu. So that's the operating so I know Docker has loaded, so it's a little more efficient to use the same one here. And when we want it to run the bash shell. And I mistyped something. Thank you. Okay. Um, and now you'll see I have a bash shell here with this with random, that with the that's the ID of the container. Um, so now we could actually go into user share nginx html. And if we look at the index file, we'll see this Docker content copy from container, the one we just saw here. So we could actually modify it here. And this one we'll do. And now we should see it change here. Okay? So I've actually, so there's a couple ways you can you know, go, go about this sort of thing. And as I run out of time here, we'll just do a couple of things. So what about log files? If I want to see the file, I can, there's a two ways I can do it. I can use the docker logs command, and I can just ask it to see the logs. And this is because I didn't really have time to talk about it. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I need to get out of here back to my Docker host, sorry. In the Docker file, and this is true for both the open source and this, the Nginx Plus, we link the standard out and standard error to the Docker log collector. That's part of the, when we, you see a link in the uh, Docker file. So everything is available on Docker for that. You can do your logs separately in separate files, however you want, but that's an easy way of doing that. And then you'll see here I have the Docker, the commands here for my access log and my error log, um, the standard ones from here. There's also something called the remote API. So I can actually do an HTTP request. We'll do a curl for that. And I can use local host since I'm on my Docker host here. I've set up my Docker host to run uh, the remote API in port 4243. Containers, give it the container name. And then tell it what logs you want to run. And you do that by specifying the um, standard out. If you want to see everything, you do standard out equals one and standard air equals one. It's taking a while. Um, and if you wanted to see, say I just wanted to see standard out, I would just take a, get rid of that, and we'll see standard out. So the one last thing I want to show you is, let's say I wanted to restart Nginx, because I don't have SSH access, how would I do that? Docker allows you to send signals to a container. So we can see really quick here, if we go to um, this guy, sorry, what's going on here? This is the status, this is one of the Nginx Plus things you haven't seen it. The reason I'm doing that is you'll see the uptime, we can actually watch it change. Um, I need to move this down and shrink it a bit. So it's been up for four and a half minutes. If I send a signal to that container, I can do docker uh, kill dash s 
Hup is a signal you send Nginx to reload the configuration. We see that it just, re it just reloaded the configuration. So all the signals I can send, I can do that. Okay. And that's really, I think I'm running out of time here. That's my, my demo. Again, there's lots more you can do with Docker. I've only scratched the surface here. Um, I said my blog post goes, goes into more detail, and there's lots of you know, documentation from the Docker site and everything else. So thank you.